Acts chapter 2, you may recall that on the day of Pentecost, Peter preached this amazing sermon and 3,000 people were added to the church. And it's very interesting how they lived as a church, as a congregation. Acts chapter 2, 43. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. From verse 41, it says, those who welcomed this message were baptized and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and prayers. So this was, this was a very new community, community of believers. How did, they, how, did they, how did they spend their time together? The apostles' teaching to fellowship with each other to breaking of bread, to praying together. They shared everything in common. That is the model of the very first church. The notion of life together groups is that we are sort of going back to the beginning. This is how church was done from the very beginning. The way people grew, grew in their faith, got to know God better, loved each other better, was to be closer to each other to work together as a team of believers, as a group of believers who share everything in common. In the congregation, we do so many good things. We have fellowship meetings. We have outreaches where we go out and we bless people. We go out to... But one of the things that's... One of the things we've been aiming for is also to bring us together in a place where we can share how we are doing in our faith. We can have more closer interaction with each other. This is not necessarily a Bible study. You know, we don't, we are not, the Life Together groups are not Bible study groups. They are not book study groups. They are groups where we actually come together to share how we are each doing as individuals and to share our burdens with each other, to pray with each other, just like the first church did, to share a lot of things in common. It's a closer form of fellowship as well. And the idea is to do this on a regular basis. And historically, Everywhere where churches have grown and have been sustained, small group fellowships are such an important part of how this happens. So far, we have four of them. One meets on Sunday afternoons at 4.30, another meets on Monday, lunchtime. Thursdays, there are two groups. As I thought about the group, uh, three words came to mind, three C's, if you will. Congeniality, collegiality, and confidentiality. Our group is, is diverse in terms of gender, age, occupation, interest, and Bible study, and, and group process background. I've really enjoyed the group, and I would encourage people in our community to um, really strongly consider it. It goes into the definition of what church is living together and supporting each other. I'm a caregiver, a full-time caregiver for my husband. That in itself is tough. This gives me an opportunity to talk with people on a serious nature. It gives me an outlet to do that. I enjoy um, being part of a community and being there to support others, support others in prayer. I've really found value in it and I'm going to continue. It's given me a chance to meet people that I that are new in our congregation that I wouldn't have had the chance to meet at all. And so even meeting on Zoom, you see their face, you hear their voice, you hear their viewpoints, and it's it, it's all good. 
this, this is Craig here, and um, I, I still made us get around because I'm in one of the groups. Uh, my wife, Kate, is in a, one of the Thursday groups, and my mom, Elaine, is in, a, in the other Thursday group. And so we, uh, we, we sometimes compare notes on, on, on these groups and how they function. And they all have a little bit of their own, their, their, their own, their own personality. I think they sort of they, they, they take on the personalities of the people who are there. So some go, you know, it's going to be a strict hour. Some sort of linger. Some get into a lot of looking at some Bible texts and talking through those and using that as a way to express uh, what's going on in their lives and sort of refocus and refract what's going on in their lives. Um, and some, some take a more so so social nature, but, but we're all enjoying our groups. One of the things where I find the small group very useful is there are times when you feel like you need to reach out to somebody. And it fills in a void between yeah. burdening an individual, sort of the go-to person, whether it's a pastor or another member of the congregation, and trying to share news with too large of a group. Hello, everyone. My name is Patience, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the group. And for me, it's been um, a silver lining in uh, the pandemic. I moved to Durham about four years ago and started going to Duke Chapel. I felt I needed to know more people in the church and to grow. So I started with the Bible study. And when I saw the opportunity to join this group, I thought it was a wonderful opening to get to know more people and to actually form a, a community. Francis and Jack have done a wonderful job of balancing or looking at scripture, sharing, um, and praying for each other. And so I found it to be of, of great help and of great benefit to me. We were a very small group, but we had basically the same experience that Fran and Jack's group have had. The one thing that I really like about this small group for all the reasons that have been given before is that you are giving testimonies to your lives after the Bible readings and a, dis a little bit of a discussion of that. Um, we share with each other our concerns about our own lives and the most powerful thing that happens in the group is that we listen to each other and we've gotten to know each other really well. There are a few things I, I've noticed in our group as well. I remember the very first day we, we, we met, we were able to put aside even the Bible notes and everything we wanted to discuss because someone actually felt so strongly about what was going on in America today. Just having that forum with a group of Christians to talk through that and to listen to each other and to share our experiences and I could tell that the burden lifted by the time the meeting was over. She, you know, she felt better about it. And there was a bit more hope. In fact, one of the things that has blessed me a lot is our discussions around our families uh, and challenges within our families. It could be anything from a marriage falling apart to how best to bring up our grandchildren, etc. And having that warmth of people around you who actually truly understand and share your faith some of our grandmothers have felt that they really want to impart a lot to their grandchildren spiritually. And having that discussion about it and how do you do that well, being there and listening to that has taught me a lot. Our group meets on Thursday. We have 10 people in it. And the, it's a group that we really didn't know. Some of the people we knew somewhat, but it's been an interesting experience getting to know one another. Jan and I were both in the original uh, pilot group with Michael, and one of the things that he kept saying then is we had to be respectful. And the two things he kept talking about was confidentiality and timeliness, so that we do try to do that. We're, what we've also done over the last few times is to start letting people explain their own faith journey. And by explain, it's open-ended. They, they talk however they wish about it. Oftentimes, it's taking 15 minutes or so just to talk about what's gone on, what's, not go what's gone on, what they wish to go on. And it's been a nice opportunity to get to know where people came from because not everybody, almost nobody was brought up in this congregation. 
I just have really enjoyed uh, the relational aspect of the group and the, the care that we give each other through this group interaction. It, it's been really a blessing in my life this year. This is Henry. I uh, moved to Durham relatively recently and never really got connected to a church, although we were looking around and trying to find a church home. And then when the pandemic hit, it kind of made it tough to connect with the church. And so this group has been a very meaningful part of my life. Uh, I've always been a part of small groups like this and have a strong church uh, relationship over the course of my life. And this this has been a wonderful experience, and John has done a great job in leading this. And we live in such a strange time now when we can't interact face-to-face -face with each other. And of course, I don't know any of the people in the group on a personal basis outside of our meeting. It's filled a need in my life. I'm really grateful for it, and I'm looking forward to continuing with it. I feel the same way that, um, that Craig did about what he said about being having a group to reach out to when Steve was diagnosed with its COVID. I received several emails from the group and calls and this and that, and it really felt uh, very good to be able to share this with a smaller group. One thing that I've enjoyed is age range in the group because we will just say that a 21st birthday was, you know, <laughs> and I'm, I'm certainly not 21. So it was, it's great to um, have this viewpoints of a lot of different people at different stages in their lives. And it's been very refreshing to hear those faith stories and how people have come from point A to point A, B, C, D, E, F, or whatever. So it's been a lot to me, and I, I do wish to continue. The group has meant a lot, and it's something I'm really looking forward to, to getting to know people better. I like the different age range that uh, Elaine has talked about. I've gained a lot from knowing people a lot younger than I am. The faith stories are really important to me. I think it's been a really good experience. I am the co-leader of this group with Patrick. We both took part in the pilot. We both strongly felt like this would be a great opportunity to have an intentional group for parents. One of the things that happened in the pilot was the idea was to start out in person um, with meetings. And then when the pandemic hit, we were uh, forced to, to use Zoom. But our group had always um, intended on meeting by Zoom. What we wanted to do was meet late in the evening after children had been put to bed. So um, we meet at eight o'clock in the evening on Thursdays. Because it is rather late, at first I tried to keep the um, time to one hour, um, and that gradually has morphed to later and later. Um, sometimes we've gone an hour and a half, so um, it's interesting what it, we just go with whatever the group needs to speak about. We have two couples that participate, single parent and another parent that just participates um, alone. Uh, not as a couple. There's a person that lives in Virginia that is part of our group. It's just been such a, a wonderful bonding experience to have that person with us. Everyone has been very open with each other, and I think, I hope that um, emphasizing the confidentiality has been uh, a point that's helped people be comfortable doing that. We got into things like, you know, the popular culture at Christmas time, the Santa Claus issue, and you know how you you want your children to participate in that, but yet you really want them to understand um, what Christmas is. So we had discussions around that. Um, we began discussing, um, you know, why bad things happen to good people and how you discuss that kind of thing with your children. Of particular note to me was. When our two weeks rolled around at Thanksgiving, we were to meet on Thanksgiving evening. And I said, so next time it's Thanksgiving, what do you guys think? And there were, they were all like, well, we're going to be here. Yeah. And I said, really, you guys want to meet on Thanksgiving evening? And they said, yeah, that sort of be fun. And one of the participants said, yes, yeah, something to do on Thanksgiving. <laughs> We met on Thanksgiving evening, and it was a true blessing to know, um, at least to me, during that day, I was going to have 
that meeting with my group and um I think the thing that really strike, strikes me with this group is, is is the question of relevance. You know, this this group is meeting and meeting a, a relevant need in people's in people's lives at a particular phase of life where you are bringing up children and you know, which uh, we all know takes up your life eventually. <laughs> so while, uh, if you have one child, they take over literally. And um, living a Christian life through that and bringing up the child in the fear of God. It's just so challenging to do. Um, and I don't believe God designed us to do it by ourselves alone. <laughs> you know, community is such an important part of it. Just so that everybody is aware of what we do uh, in, the, in the Life Together groups. So when we meet, the meeting has a number of sessions. You know, the first one is, in the first 10 minutes or so, we just catch up with each other. How are you doing? How's your week been? How's your fortnight been, actually? And then we just interact and see how things are going with us in life. Then we have, a, we have a food for thought section, which is essentially just a 10, 15 minutes exposition of a biblical topic. You know, something that we are using that book to help us at the moment. But I mean, we just share something to sort of kick, kick start our, our discussion and our, our evening. As, as I said earlier, it's not a Bible study, it's not a book study. So this is just a food for thought section, maximum 15 minutes. After that, the next half hour or so, it's all about discussing what is going on in our lives. You know, how the, the food for thought helps to seed the discussions, but then we have to just then share. And we, the, the idea is to encourage everybody to talk in the meeting. And um, so far, from what I'm hearing and what, what we have experienced in our group, everybody does get to share, um, which adds to the richness of the groups as well. And then the last part of the meeting, we, we, we make an effort to to pray about some of the things that we've talked about, um, to have a time where we just bring our concerns and, our, and, and those concerns are not limited to just what's is happening within the group. It's, it's limited to every, anything that we have on our hearts to pray about. Um, so in our group, for instance, we prayed about the country, about the election, about, you know, we prayed for political leaders, we prayed for doctors, we prayed for you know, grand, grandchildren, we've prayed, uh, it's a whole spectrum of things. We pray for friends of friends, you know, for instance, as well. And that's essentially the, is a meeting. And we typically have a meeting that is supposed to last a maximum of one hour, 15 minutes. That's, that's the idea. Um, so if we do one hour, 15 minutes, we've done well. If we do one hour, we've done well as well. Um, but the idea is, is that we should have time to just talk, to, talk with each other and share our lives and share what God is doing with us.